think about it and let us know what is your most disappointing mythic of the year so far jay kick us off all right my most disappointing mythic this year i would say you know one that just didn't really pan out was uh was bootlegger stash this card like debuted because it was like a big treasure synergistic card yeah debuted at like 50 60 bucks and then quickly has become you know like a 13 dollar card it's super cheap now all-time low 15 bucks for a base level copy yeah this card was you up in find the it 50s. cheaper than that yeah, yeah this is these are always going to be a little bit higher price here because these are going to represent our averages market being at 1276 yeah. means that you can probably find it even cheaper than that normally at your market price you're going to get cards that at your market price you know you're going to find versions of this for a dollar or less i mean for a dollar or two less than what that market price is that's just you're looking at your average but yeah i mean this card hit the scene absolutely exploded and then yeah that was it and you can see chat is saying it's it's trash it's it's not good and you know i think that that's fair i think that maybe it's a little bit too expensive to get online it does some pretty cool stuff but eh, maybe it's just not there you know we did get an alternate version that has bottomed at like 15. it's so interesting i mean this is one of those kind of cards where it needs to get out so early so you have yep. to like cheat it out somehow you know yep. it is alongside cards that want to see you create tokens i see chatterfang in chat also uh one of the top cards one of the top mythics of the year benny brax says at the beginning of each end step if you created a token this turn draw a card mm -hmm. this one runs really well alongside bootlegger stash you know, because you want these cards that are passively creating value off of other tokens being created. I uh, I played against a commander last night, an uncommon called Kadira, Caller of the Small. And then mm -hmm. and Kadira just says when it deals combat damage for each token, period, you control, create a 1-1 one, one white rabbit creature token. That's good. And then the person in my pod was using Kadira combined with um, the enchantment that instead of whatever token enters, the creature tokens entering the battlefield, it's a 4-4 Vigilant Angel. And so all of these tokens, when Kadira was dealing a ton of damage, were just absolutely popping off and coming in as huge angels. Six mana to come down late. I mean, you gotta, you wanna like ramp this out with rocks, right? And then you wanna tap the lands that you didn't tap to cast it to create treasure tokens and then you're getting super value off of this but as far as buyer beware of cards that can make your eyes real wide look at it and go is this a win more card is does this come down a little too late for its effect because i think that's what yeah. the majority of players are finding yeah i think so um you know, my next pick here is uh next pick that I have that I'm looking at right now is uh Kyrie, Kyrie from uh Neo. There it is. You just passed it. The rising star on the right. Swirling sky. This, dude, or uh yeah, the swirling sky. I thought this card being flying ward three, I know it's expensive, it's a six cost card. But it seems like such a good control card. You're getting stuff back when it dies with that mill ability. Um, depending on what you've used already in the match, you know, or in the game, then you might be getting something back that's really good. I just think there's some versatility on this card. I think it's hard to kill. I think it blocks well. I just, you know, you could buy it for a dollar right now. It's like under 99 cents. This is one I'd be interesting, interested to uh, see the chart on over time. Yeah, wow. Over $10 Mythic that crashes down into the $1 range. Yeah, and yeah. chat, we're looking Dude. at these from the, from the very small window that we've had them. 
we're looking at cards that when they really popped out they were super hyped and people were very interested six six flying ward three that has death triggers yeah really good seemingly but this one hasn't uh, really what? taken off and another blue card from a set that's still in standard but a little bit further back because we should talk about it was seagate stormcaller this was a mythic that came out of zendikar rising it's a card that is like a snapcaster mage like a, a snapcaster mage but it costs not seven even, mana right and it doesn't have flash it's like right. honestly not even close right but still like a dollar card for the borderless all-time high of 16 bucks for this card yeah man i mean to go from 16 to one that's like a that's like a shitty penny stock it's like super bad yeah that one tanked for sure yeah it's super tanked it came out it just crapped the bed it just essentially pooped all down its leg it didn't even sprint it just like walked and pooped itself it never did anything it never did anything this was a card when i first saw it i really thought that it was going to see a pretty good amount of play eight mana in green so who cares and then you're revealing cards from the top of your library where x is the highest mana value on a commander you own and it can be on the battlefield or in the command zone which is what i thought gave this one a little legs because you didn't have to have your commander on the battlefield but then putting all of those permanent cards onto the battlefield i mean if you're running this in a commander like uh what's it called a more what's that a uh, dragon that lets you put free stuff onto the battlefield um oh gosh I know what you're talking about, but I can't. Uh, an entirely permanent based deck. You know, if you're running a commander with six or more mana, right? Yep. You get to dig down six cards in your library. You want to run this in a commander deck where you've mostly got permanents in the deck, if not only permanents in the deck. Sure. And so I thought that this one was going to be a little bit more just because it could hit pretty hard. Also doesn't you know, exile itself so you can recast it. No, it's not. It's not Ur Dragon. It's um, uh, set was CMR and then it was colors, uh, blue, green, blue, green, white. Amareth, the Lustrous. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it shares a card type with that permanent, you may reveal that card and put it into your hand. Six mana commander in a permanent base deck because you don't, with Amareth, want to be hitting a lot of, you know, instants and sorceries. You want to try and put all of your instants and sorceries on instants and sorceries effects on permanents. You know, Seal of Doom, Seal the the seal type stuff for your removal you know journey to nowhere that kind of thing it's a journey straight to nowhere but yeah majestic genesis was one when <clears throat> i saw it i was like oh hell yeah huge green spell and it yeah. never really popped how about tamio oh uh, should we talk about tamio completed sage tamio complete boar got him um I mean, we could talk about Tamio. We could also talk about Vivian. I, I think, you know what? Let's talk about Tamio a little bit. Comes out. 30 it's bucks. It's got the Phyrexian symbol on it. So everybody's like, oh. Panic Town. Absolute it's Panic Town. It. Oh, God. You can cast it for life. For cheaper. But I think they mitigated the power level of the card because of that. They were like, look, this can't actually be that good. Right. <laughs> like, let's not let 60, it be that good so we have a lot 60 of hype. bucks all-time high 60 dollars all-time yeah. low two bucks hope you didn't buy your tamios yet <laughs> you yeah, found man. the right time I mean, to buy them i think you know with this card uh it's just not impactful enough 
Look at that chart, though. Two dollars, dude. I'm telling you, man. That here, chart here to here. That chart looks like Citadel is trying to put it out of business. Yeah, it looks the market like a makers... hedge fund is trying to hammer it down until it has to go bankrupt. Tommy, no! It's awful. <laughs> Tommy, no! That's what happened. Yeah, I mean, these are, and you know, there's this segment could be called how to not FOMO. Um, you know, you learn a lot about this because you see it every set. You go, oh, fuck. <laughs> you go, uh, here it goes again. But low risk. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's low risk, right? Jake. What about like Font of card. Magic? I know you do. That's this why card, I want to bring it up. This card needs time, bro. This card needs time. This is all This time. card gets so much better with age. Seriously. It's going to get so much better with age. I Now, I have to say this as somebody who has like a, a small position of 16, 16 to 20 copies of this card, something like that. I just think it's good. For me, I think it's good. I do. I think that it goes in like a storm deck. Um, think Rograk. Um, what what is it called? It's called uh, Sakashima, Sakashima, and um, Kark, Karkashima. That's the deck. So I think that this card just needs time. I get it. It's a little bit expensive at four mana. But if you're playing it in a control shell or something like that, if you're playing it in a storm shell, I think this card can go crazy. You obviously got to yeah. have a low Sakashima CMC. plus Vile Smasher. Yep. Yep. Low CMC commanders. Probably the best here. And I think that's Definitely. what's going to hold this one back, Jake. I think that this doesn't, this doesn't just get slammed into like any old niv mizzet storm casual edh deck i think that it Possibly. only gets put into partner decks and at four mana i mean you're talking about cdh commanders you think they got space for a four mana does nothing enchantment i mean no probably not but you have to think this is one of those cards and I'm talking about a, a speculative card, right? Yeah. I'm talking about a card that we don't know when it's going to be reprinted again. It just came out, right? right? The set is still in print. So for me, this is a long hold. Well, and it falls it's under our, our own rules for difficult to reprint because it says the words commander and command zone on it. Right. It, not only that, but then... We're just going back to Dominaria, right? Where we just talked about, we're going to get a whole bunch more legends. So this is one of those cards where I just see it as you just give it time. Let it find its place. Even if it just goes up two times or three times its value, that's a win for me. If What's I can your trade average them away on your position of font? Else. Do you know? I'm like down on it because I was buying these at like threes and fours. Gotcha. I just wanted to yeah. get that on record because I want to clip this and come back at and look at it in two years. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see where see it's at. Font of Magic has popped off. You know, another one that didn't work out from Neo was Tezzeret, Betrayer of Flesh. That one was kind of a bummer too. Tezzeret, Betrayer of Flesh, it seemed like, you know, it has that uh, reduces the cost. But it just doesn't really have the legs. And it was one of the big cards that kind of like moved that set coming out. It is kind of crazy how hot some of those cards came out of the gate. I mean, you're talking about an all time high of 50 bucks and this card is $3 now. Uh. Yeah, man. You're looking at Betrayer of Flesh? Yeah, exactly. I think that Tezzeret falls more into the category of wait and see because it's that I mean, activated ability. Risk. The first activated ability of an artifact you activate each turn costs two less to activate. The right artifact with an activated ability gets printed. Bing, bang, boom. This thing is comboing off like crazy. Yeah. 
I just, I, uh, you know, it's also a planeswalker in freaking commander. So there's, if it doesn't take off in standard or modern or pioneer, which is really going to move its price. Planeswalkers in commander. Yeah. That's the thing about it, man. I Can't think that kind commander. of speaks to, it speaks to like a bigger thing, which is the fact that commander is really the lifeblood of this game and that's what's moving the price on cards for sure so whether or not this takes off in standard i mean that would be the best time to sell it at this point um i think this is a good point too yeah that um that i saw high five make in chat we've talked about this all year how they've taken wizards has taken the experience for collectors for players and sort of slowly stretched it out and pulled it apart so that the collectors can get versions like this the showcase tezzeret betrayer of flesh all-time high 65 dollars sorry about it but then That's the right. players can get tezzeret betrayer of flesh base copy bing bang boom it drives down the prices it's tough to use this one as an example because it has gotten so cheap but Jake, you did want to talk about this Vivian, huh? Yeah, I mean, this was a Vivian that when I first saw it, uh, I was like, okay, it has this birthing pot effect. It does pretty much everything I want. Uh, it has this mill five for a plus one, and then you're getting value. It has velocity. It creates four fours that are going to protect it. But it's just too hop, too, excuse me, it's too top heavy. It's too, uh, it's too expensive. It costs six CMC. I figured, you know, it's in green. So not going to be that big a deal, that difficult to cast. Thankfully, I only picked up a single copy of this for my collection. But um, yeah, that was a card that just didn't pan out either. Well, you see a card that has, you see a Planeswalker card specifically that says plus two. I'm a birthing pod. And then you go, okay, well, that's pretty good. What else does it come with? Plus one, mill five, put all the creatures that get milled into your hand. Wow. Okay, yeah. that's also really good. It's good. And it's then good. you see, oh, it doesn't have an ultimate. But then you go, oh, well, instead of an ultimate, it can it's just create a, toolbox. a four, four every turn for four turns if you wanted it to. Yeah, and if you have a doubling season or anything on the battlefield that's going to give that additional oomph, I was like, this card is just good, man. Like, there's not one effect on it that I don't like. So, honestly, uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. I think it has to do with the fact that, like D Hammer's saying, walkers in general get targeted down in commander, you know, getting all the way around the table, even if the creature, even if the planeswalker can create a creature to protect itself, very difficult to get back to your turn and get more value off of this except in a deck like chromatic bridge where it's just dumping planeswalkers onto the battlefield yeah that's the kind of place where i would see this really shine but i mean at three bucks if you like the card yeah d hammer has it right too good at five only okay at six i think Correct. that's what it i think that's what it comes down to is yeah it is just an absolute showstopper at five because you have to think if you're ramping you and it's a five cost you could get it online as early as turn three and it's just unfucking beatable as a turn three play so it would dominate standard you know remember nissa nissa the plague from oh, war of the spark and everybody who played that standard season you know that when you played um or you know it's a uh, who shakes the world yep it's who shakes the world yeah and this card was just nuts it's making all your mana tap for more which is a big deal but yeah like you can just see those five cost walkers if they're in green they're really easy to uh that to deck ramp out that deck ran hydroid crisis and nissa who shakes the world and mercy was it a pain in the ass oh my god it was so difficult to deal with this is one where I still think we've got some promise here, even though it's down from Art's its original good. price. Art Arcane Bombardment. You know, you're looking at a little bit of a correction here, coming in just under 20 for the Mythic. Dipping this down. is just a good card for a collection, especially with Treasure Dude. It's in the treasure colors. 
which means that you can get this online easily. Yeah. I just think like, dude, this card is so good. I do think that this one has got some legs as a long-term play here. You know, it's a yeah. mythic from a set that came out two sets ago, three sets ago this year. And so it's probably going to be a second before this one's reprinted unless they just want to use this one as one of the like printed printed mythics in pre-con decks because it does really fit well whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery each turn exile an instant or sorcery at random and copy each card exiled with it cast any number of the copies so you get to do it over and over and over may it's that may as well right. so it doesn't turn the game into degenerate chaos mode right i love that may dude right exactly i think that over yeah. time this one is a nice little nice little buy and hold especially while it's at such a low of three bucks you know four bucks to pick up a copy of it i feel like this is one in particular where right now at the three or four dollar mark if you buy two of them wait six months to a year this card's going to be more up into the like six or seven dollar range and uh suddenly you'll be able to sell the one copy to pay for both of them you know yeah or trade it away put right. it towards something else uh, danica with the two dollar super chat says thoughts on wandering emperor we can talk a little bit on that card that card didn't really pan out um well thank you for that two dollar super chat i want to correct you there wandering emperor is being pretty widely played um it's got play it? it's got play in pioneer it's got play in standard and it's got play in modern oh okay never mind i'm thinking of a different card here yeah this is oh, the yeah, flashing flashing yeah. planeswalker oh, flash Right. that uh activates abilities anytime you could cast an instant if it entered the battlefield this turn this card is good this card has been proven this card has has seen play won games you know you really wanted to get this one off that initial dip looks like people surprisingly the chart is backwards on this one looks like people were super low on it and then it's oh my god it's good in pioneer oh shit wait this is good in modern yeah it's i mean seeing, look at it's completely unrelated but it just shows how you have to let the players find the cards look up on licensed hearse it's not a planeswalker it's not the wandering emperor but the chart does the same thing yep i mean it's just a nothing burger out the gate everybody's like super low on it and then players are like fuck man this card is good they start buying it that... wait we gotta look at one more oh okay. Renin I'll, seven i'll wrap this up Renin after sorry that. sorry oh well renin seven's from last year let me yeah let me go pull that one up was renin seven last year yes sir that was midnight hunt oh never mind that's no longer standard my bad no it is oh it is standard midnight hunt's still oh, okay. standard yeah this is one of those cards that was like oh god you know and this is a perfect example of selling the name dude everybody knew renin six this is clearly not Ren and Six. It's much more expensive. Right. Um, but it's, it, this is about hype. And, the, you know, this one was last year compared to 2022, which we were looking at. But Jake's right. The example here kind of sums up the whole point of the segment, which is don't get caught in FOMO, especially for Mythics, especially pre-order prices. But know that, you know, we're not always going to nail it because like Unlicensed Terse, which is a rare, but also like wandering emperor which is a mythic these cards when they are found by the players and they start going into especially extended formats pioneer modern yeah i mean are you kidding me three we got even playable legacy decks here maybe it's like a one of in a sideboard there don't know much about legacy but don't get caught in that early fomo especially if they're just trying to sell a name like with ren and seven jake yeah, I mean, Ren and Seven, you got four abilities on here. So um, immediately out the gate, you're like, oh my God, four abilities. It's called Ren and Seven. So it's like up a level from Ren and Six. This must be like the new hot shit. But if you had bought this early on, I mean, I remember tracking this card in my app because I opened one in my, uh, in my set box from this set. And it quickly dropped in price from like $40 all the way down to like, I believe $8. We could probably go on eBay right now and find a copy for around seven or eight bucks. So just keep that in mind with this kind of stuff. Um, it's really hard to evaluate a card because 
as players, we have biases about what we like, what we think is good. Um, but it really, there's so many different factors are that are at play when a new card comes out. Sometimes it's a complete powerhouse. Like for me, when I read Kolagon's Command way back in the day or Walking Ballista way back in the day, I remember reading those cards and being like, geez, these are so good. And then, you know, you go on Reddit, you get a little confirmation bias and then you're like, wow, they are good, but it's still luck. You know, you have to hope that the players find these cards. You have to hope like that they actually take off and they actually are good. But yeah, a lot of the mythics that would have been showcased in these sets, you know, Ren and Seven would have been at the front of like what we saw for that set. Right. Um, you know, Tezzeret, Tamio, those were the the main sellers of of those sets. Uh, they're the first cards that we see, the first images. So they get players salivating over the set, but then you see that later on, it just doesn't really pan out and they kind of like <laughs> fart. Yep. But then you have ones, and I'm seeing people in chat mention it. It's a rare, so we didn't cover it in this vid. But yeah, Ledger Shredder. These are the yeah. kind of cards that can debut low, especially if they're innocuous. But if they slot really well into a constructed deck, especially in the Eternal format, that's when they that's absolutely right. explode. So don't get caught up in FOMO, but watch the people who are good at building modern and pioneer decks very closely. Because they, right. they will be able to determine those rares and mythics that are going to super pop versus the ones that we talked about here today, which uh, went the opposite direction. Yeah, they'll have like a five cost, right? And the five cost will get traded out with other five cost cards in the deck until they figure out which one is the most optimal. Right. So it's like the difference of a $20 card in a $5 card could just be just like the tiniest little bit of edge. And so the bulk of players just can't really they can't really figure it out but yeah ren and seven that was a good card if you paid you know seven or eight bucks for it and you happened to wait you know all the way until now from 2021 when it first came out if you bought those at 40 bucks i hope you love the card and i hope you're playing it a lot but it's not worth what you paid that's just the facts